All right, welcome to Thursdays on the Stoop, containing multitudes with Holly M. Went. Holly M. Went is the author of Heading North from Braddock Avenue Books and Associate Professor of English and Creative Writing and Director of Creative Writing at Lebanon, Lebanon Valley College. A former Peter Taylor Fellow for the Kenyan Review Writers Workshop, Holly is, is a recipient of the Robert and Charlotte Barron Fellowship for Creative and Performing Artists from the American Antiquarian Society and fellowships from the Gentel Foundation and Hambidge Center. Their writing has appeared in Shenandoah, Fourway Review, Barrel House, Memorius, and elsewhere. Thank you for being here and Holly, take it away. Hello everyone. Um, I'm delighted to be here and uh, to be working with you. Thanks so much to Julian and Blue Stoop um, for making all of this possible. And we're here mostly to discuss and then implement strategies for generating, differentiating, and wrangling those large casts of characters. And um, I'm going to talk about ways we can make this applicable not only to the fiction folks in the room, but also memoirists and poetry writers, because I think there's something here for everyone. But as a little bit of background, I have um, spent a whole lot of time thinking about and working on this large cast conundrum in my debut novel, Heading North, which tracks a season in which a queer closeted hockey player rebuilds his life in the NHL after losing his clandestine boyfriend and former team in a catastrophic uh, plane crash. And so essentially, I needed two complete ice hockey teams of roughly 25 players each, plus another dozen people for each team for front offices and coaching staff and masseuses and all of that. Um, I needed family members and extended networks for all of the major characters. I needed um, about a dozen characters from around various other teams in the league who were, you know, players to play against um, and media personalities and so on. And so, I mean, it's a lot. So I actually found myself turning to spreadsheets as a both a generative and organizational tool. And it is um, perhaps unexpected to say like, ah, creative writer going to the spreadsheets. But honestly, I'm here to help us find ways to think of those as liberating um, and generative as opposed to restrictive. So I'm going to um, share my screen now and show you one of the spreadsheets that I used um, for the hockey novel. This is something from early-ish in the process where I was just trying to get a handle on who are these people, but um, spreadsheet time. So you will see in this, um, in this spreadsheet, we have our, um, this is the spreadsheet for the San Francisco Pilots, which is the team that um, is the centerpiece of most of the novel. We've got our owners and executives, we've got coaching staff, and then we get into players. And what I did for managing the players was turn first to a lot of the stuff we associate with sports stuff, back of the ice hockey card um, information, things like jersey number, position, um, height, weight, uh, where they come from, and then stats lines um, to figure out who's good, um, who's struggling, who thinks they're better than they are, <laughs> um, and all of that wonderfulness. Um, thinking about ages, um, who's on their way up, who's on their way out, um, whether there are geographical um, affiliations and connections that might lead to certain players meshing better or worse with each other. Do we have language um, barriers or potential language barriers? Um, because these are these are also chains of interpersonal relationships that I wanted to pay attention to. Um, we've got our bench guys, we've got our defense, um, we've got call ups, we've got goalies, call up goalies. I mean, it goes on and on. And I made a sheet for each one of my teams in this way. I'm not going to bore you with all of them, I promise. But um, I also. Um, thought about um, what other kinds of details might I want in the early going here. And so I made another column and that is my trivia column. So thinking about what were just some little details that I might um, think about that could help me figure out who are these people. Some of these emerged organically, some of them, I was like, I just need someone to fill this role. So who could that be? 
Um, so um, for general manager, Lilia Aliyev, first female general manager in um, my version of the NHL, has wanted this job her whole life, even enough to accept that job from her father, which is essentially an ongoing power play, who's really in charge. Um, and then uh, who are our um, coaching staff and uh, support staff? What are they like? Um, what are the what are the players like? Who's got a temper? Who's a good teammate? Um, who's who's the human golden retriever of the team? Um, you know, these are little shorthanded things. Some of them are a little bit basic. Some of them are um, generators of interesting conflicts. Um, who thinks they deserve more than they actually do? Little things like that. But I wanted to make sure that I was also thinking about um, what could differentiate um, my players from each other, from the other um, characters that I was creating. And so um, in the fuller version of this, you could imagine, of course, these columns just going and going and going to fill out um, what are their family circumstances. Um, by the time I finished the novel, um, I had players who were going on um, uh, who were um, in the process of being traded, players who were um, in the process of getting divorced, who were raising teenage children, not major characters, but minor characters, and that's infusing their day-to-day -day, um, experiences. Um, oh, and a question in the chat from Mona. Did you use formulas in the early sheets or did you simply use the sheet to list? I did not use any formulas. Um, I just I just type things out. I made it as frankly as low tech as humanly possible. You could of course do these things in just a Microsoft Word table, um, but I thought the the creation of sort of more and more columns was a little easier in Excel. I could just scroll forever if I needed to. Uh, but yeah, you will you will all hopefully um, enjoy the fact that this whole thing is pretty low tech. Um, People who have design skills can make these things much prettier than I can, but I'm going for utility and I'll share some resources with you as we go on. Um, so this was this was one way of using a spreadsheet um, and it worked especially well because I was I'm writing I wrote a sports book um, and there's there's a lot of affinity there. But I think also to do another little screen share, we have seen um, character generation. Um, methodologies that are certainly not um, sporty in the same sense, but um, more like the Dungeons and Dragons version. So um, what I have shared here is a, version of, um, it's, it's not directly from Dungeons and Dragons, it's a Lord of the Rings role-playing game, very much like Dungeons and Dragons, but you can see um, different ways in which this is this is set up um, as a character generator. So um, I'm, I'm just gonna open this up to you. Um, and the maker of this sheet is um, Arna Hashin, um, but I'm gonna open this up to you all. What possibilities do you see in something like this for for your own work um and it doesn't have to be fantasy it doesn't have to be um adventure um or choose your own adventure how might we use something like this and you can just like pop uh throw ideas in the chat or um come off mute and throw some ideas out whatever you like Well, I'm writing a fantasy. So for me, this makes perfect sense. And I think a, a way it would really help me is to sort of ground me in some of their decision making when I'm getting to something because there are a lot of characters and there's a lot of twists. Um, kind of just what Stu put in the chat, just being able to predict kind of what, what the next thing would be with the next, how a character would react to something or because your own feelings do get mixed up especially because I'm very attached. So so having that to sort of look back on 
um, like I would playing D and D to just sort of be like, okay, what would my character do and not myself? Would they be morally gray? Would they be, you know, very austere? Would they in like how would they present themselves in a situation? So I think this is such a cool idea. Yeah, I have a spreadsheet similar to yours with all of my characters. And um, this is for the sequel to the one I'm just finishing up now. And so um, so as people, new people came in, I added to that original spreadsheet. But this is perfect for individual person sheets. I really like this idea. Yeah, um, and um, I will say... Um when we get a little deeper into our hour, I do have um, some sheets to share with you that you can fill out on your own. This of course is also the kind of thing that with um, 30 seconds of internet searching, you can get a hundred different varieties of this um, and they tend to be very accessible. Um, so please certainly make use of that. Uh, yeah, Tracy. Oh, I saw the speed category and I was thinking, oh, that could even play into dialogue right? Like how fast that person responds. And if someone else isn't as quick on their, um, I was going to say feet, but their tongue <laughs> saying something so mm -hmm. interesting. And um, yeah, thinking about these things, which are certainly gameplay mechanics, but that we can interpret in ways that have nothing to do with making it a game, thinking about how fast does someone speak? And um, that might also have something to do with, um, are they deliberate in the speech or are they reactive? Um, certainly we, we know lots of folks, never ourselves, but certainly other folks who speak without thinking too quickly. Um, you know, so would those be, um, ways to think about that, um, from Fable, helpful with a larger party of people, five or six main characters interact with many background characters. Yes. Rather than maybe one or two main characters. So yeah, to help differentiate, um, who's doing what, um, and then I was also thinking with this particular sheet about things like that list of skills. And on this sheet, those skills correspond with some particular aspect of the game. And you'll see in the tiny gray text that they're attached to um, kind of the major character stats, wisdom, intelligence, and so on. Um, but you might also think about, um, as you're writing your own work, um, if we imagine different common um, personality traits of the kind that are often on display in our writing as vehicles for tension. So thinking about honesty, vulnerability, uh, cooperativeness, argumentativeness, impulsiveness, and so on. Um, if you made your own list of those kinds of categories or personality traits, and then uh, like gave your characters scores on those, to give a sense of where are the interesting intersections that might arise there. Um, so for example, if you're writing a new couple and you realize that they've got vastly different scores on argumentativeness and honesty, that sounds like fireworks waiting to happen. Um, or if you realize like, I'm not getting any tension in my work and I don't know why. And then you realize, oh, it's because all of my characters are highly similar. And so there's never any friction between them. They're reacting in the same ways. They're in agreement all the time. What might we do to um, ruffle some feathers or um, alter characters um, in order to infuse some energy into the work? And um, as several of you already mentioned, um, great way to differentiate characters. It's a quick way to um, ensure that multiple characters aren't also filling the same kind of roles. Um, that was something that I wanted to be attentive to. Um, if I've got these big hockey teams, who who is making what happen? They can't all be making the same thing happen or things will get very repetitive very quickly. So that was a way for me to navigate all of that. Um, and this kind of thinking can be an excellent way to put some distance between yourself and the material and make it take different forms that you might not be expecting. So for my memoirists in the room, that could be a really nice way 
to put some distance between yourself and the material. Um, take the involved parties from your own life um, and make those folks character sheets, including making one for one's own self um, as a way to be honest about who am I and what am I like in these situations um, or what was I like in that situation? Where was I? Um, and if you're worried, perhaps, about being objective um, in that process, um, one thing that you can do is uh, maybe ask somebody else to fill it out for you. What might that look like? Um, someone you trust, someone who isn't going to use it as an opportunity to mess with you. But um, could that be a way of adding some um, some strangeness or some unexpectedness to the way that you have been working in that project. <laughs> Tracy says, an X, yes. Um, like, especially if you really wanna get into those uh, friction moments, that could be fascinating. Um, we also see in the D&D &D, um, character sheet um, it, under uh, character traits, um, distinctive quality, specialty, hope, and despair. We tend to see a lot of uh, places on character development sheets, whether they're D&D &D style, whether they're the kind that are embedded in um, programs like Scrivener, or if you look up character development sheets um, anywhere on the internet, you're going to find someone has included wants, desires, goals, that sort of thing because we have often been encouraged to think about those as drivers for tension, right? Um, drivers for what will put the work in motion. Um, and uh, even these things tend to have them, like what is, what is the big obstacle? What is the source of despair? What is the source of hope? And uh, on the template that I'm going to share with you, um, you'll also see that I have created a separate space for character wants and character needs. Um, and uh, that's because sometimes what a character wants and what a character needs are actually in conflict with each other. So, for example, what Maud wants is a venti latte. What Maud needs to do is get to work on time because Maud is already uh, like on the fifth strike. Um, and so that character decision, no matter what it is, is going to have some sort of consequence, we imagine, for the work, whether um, it's fulfilling Maud's pleasure, but then giving Maud consequences to deal with later, um, whether that's Maud going to work still very sleepy, um, and then having to navigate the day in that way, what will that lead to? So one way of thinking, and that's a really small one, um, could be larger scale. Um, what Travis wants is to patch things up with his ex. What Travis needs, sort of at a, as a, at a cosmic level, is to figure out who he is without a partner. Like, who are you by yourself? Um, and we can imagine that leading in lots of different ways. So I'm gonna pause my screen share here. Um, and just kind of check in. Um, I love this idea from Mona, um, using tarot cards to help with character development. Yeah, um, do a reading for, for your folks. Um, uh, does anybody use um, like astrology trying to figure, do you know what your character's uh, signs are? Some people do that. Um, some people might figure out um, if you're working on fantasy or science fiction and we don't have astrology, like what is the system? Is there a system um, by which people think about those things? Um, that can be another level of lore in the work too. So if that's helpful. Um, so I'm just gonna pause here for a second because I do have some ideas about how we could use um, this kind of thing for poetry, but um, just checking in, do we have any questions thus far? Oh. Um, Deanna, great question. Uh, how did you make sure it was easy for a reader to track or remember so many characters across the book? Um, a lot of that is trying to make sure that the characters that folks need to remember are in fact memorable. Um, 
that involved a lot of really careful name choice. Also making sure I don't have too many characters whose names sound similar, have similar cadences, start with the same letter, that kind of thing. Um, I tried not to do it with any of my uh, main characters. And then also understanding that at a certain point, readers will reach a level of character satu saturation. So if you have kind of role players in the background who are not super important, but that ha have to exist for the fabric of the universe of the work to, to function, um, make, so make it so that um, where it's important, we're being reminded of who they are in little ways. And also um, doing our best to cue the reader into when is it important to know this thing? When is it not? Um, I will I will freely confess, um, I don't necessarily expect everyone to remember all of the like 16 players on the ice um, on the team who are not super duper important, but I need them. To, I just need them to be differentiated enough so that when the game is taking place on the pages of the book, um, there's a sense of where people are spread out. And some of that's through repetition, you know, kind of teaching the reader slowly. This is what this person is like. These are the kinds of decisions that person makes. Um, so where they are getting connected, we'll see them maybe three or four times throughout the book, not just once. And then they disappear and we never think of them again. Um, but yeah, sometimes readers just will not remember who characters are. Um, if it's important that they do, then test with your um your beta readers, your workshop groups to be like, okay, who's getting lost for you and where was it a problem versus who's getting lost for you, but you're getting sort of the gist of the group and um, troubleshoot in that way. But yeah, those are also um, second, third, fourth draft problems, I would say too, um, once you get some readers and have a sense. Um, To think about how we might use this strategy for poetry, I'm gonna to turn to two poetry collections um, that I love. One of them is um, Dorsey Craft's collection, Plunder, which contains a wonderful series of poems um, in which the pirate Anne Bonnie appears um, in first person in completely anachronistic uh, ways. So just a sample of titles. The pirate Anne Bonny says she's not the mad woman in the attic. The pirate Anne Bonny contemplates her hanging. The pirate Anne Bonny speaks to Orlando. The pirate Anne Bonny goes through her lover's pockets. The pirate Anne Bonny advises Jane Eyre. The pirate Anne Bonny marooned with child. The pirate Anne Bonny decides she must be a boy. There's um about uh 10 more poems um in this vein throughout the book interspersed with other kinds of poems. One thing that um, I could imagine uh, a writer who's doing a project like this, where you have a recurring character, a recurring voice is um, listing out maybe even after the drafts are written, what are the elements of the character that are being brought up in each poem to make sure it's not same, 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 same. Um, basically doing a reverse analysis, tracking those things in a spreadsheet to see like, okay, so here I'm having Anne Bonny um, considering gender really deeply. Um, and there might be three or four poems that are doing that in different ways. Here I have Anne Bonny considering really deeply um, mortality because um, the historical pirate Anne Bonny was in fact sentenced to death. Um, so like, what would that mean? Um, what are the historical details that are appearing in these poems? What are the imagined ones? Um, but a way to keep track of books that have interesting projects inside the collection of poems. Um, so again, tool for avoiding repetition, a tool to deepen um, certain resonances without um, overloading them, that could be helpful. And then um, the poet Aracela Girmai, um, who's, uh, this was one of um, Girmai's earlier collections, Kingdom Animalia, has a series of self-portrait poems, self-portrait as 
fill in some other noun or being. And um, there aren't quite as many as the Dorsey Craft um, and Bonnie poems, but they are, they do appear often enough that I think keeping track of what's happening in them and how they're um, uh, approaching different kinds of explorations of the self. Uh, oh, that one's um, Kingdom Anima Animalia. I'll put both of the titles and authors in the chat. Um, and I'll do that um, once we hit our free write, which is coming soon. But um, so she has self-portrait as snail, snake, pirate's treasure, airplane, snake skin. And we might think of, okay, but what are the interesting differences there? Because we can see some overlap. Um, so um, I have a, a free write for y'all. Um, and I, I, I'll put the prompt in the chat also, but uh, take just five minutes and brainstorm what applications um, for this kind of spreadsheet making, character creation sheet using um, techniques might be helpful to you and your own work very specifically. So I will type that in the chat now also.
Okay, let's take about 30 more seconds to jot down any last ideas or notes that you have for yourself. And then we'll we'll do a little debrief, see what ideas folks came up with if you'd like to share. Oh, I love this from Fable. Um, for a mystery series, everybody needs an alibi, description, potential motive. Yes. Um, the layers of that sort of thing, because also then you get to like the red herrings and who does it look like it was and why. Oh, just, yes. Uh, other other thoughts um, about how you might use some of these for your for your works? Oh yeah, Missy has a um, spreadsheet of locations and countries in a fantasy book. Yes, um, and you can use uh, these spreadsheets for all kinds of world building. Um, what kind of customs exist in these worlds that you're inventing? Um, climate, climate range, um, what are their seasons? What are they like? You can just have a great time with this. And Donna, um, so getting narrative distance for someone who writes both um, nonfiction and fiction. Um, yeah. Um, getting narrative distance to um, have empathy for real life people, um, especially the villain of the story. Yeah. Um, and to maybe even to find ways of just approaching those, those characters, those people, because they, they are often people in our real actual lives when we're working in nonfiction. Um, to come at them from different angles could be can be useful and maybe liberating. Giving characters different scores for argumentativeness and so on to help create nuance and tension within in a family. Yeah. And um, that, of course, works for fiction and nonfiction. Um, and for both, I think, too, when we're looking at those scores and sort of the patterns that we see, we might suddenly figure out some reasons or at least conjectured reasons for why things are the way they are. Why do these two characters just never get along? Like, oh, because they are highly similar or because they are highly different or they're mostly sim similar except they have this one sticking point. And the fact that they're similar makes that one rift all the more intense. Um, Spreadsheet for family members across several generations. Yes. Keeping track of who's born when and where and um, making sure that we don't accidentally have like, oh, so-and-so became a mother at age 72. Um, <laughs> you know, trying to make sure we haven't messed up our math. Um, I do that a lot um, working with historical fiction, making sure things um, line up in a logical way with other dates and locations, making sure people are in the right spot for um, these two characters are supposed to be starting a family. Are they in the same spot at the opportune time? Um, a lot of detail checking, a lot of what we might even call um, fact checking or continuity tracking once we, we get to later drafts can be managed, I think, um, by good processes at this point. Um, yeah, um, Jen says, um, because I'm writing a duology that spans years, I'm thinking of making up character sheets that level up occasionally. Yes, to crack, track growth and motivations. Um, you've got whole lifetimes of folks. Um, Tracy, brainstorming on aunt, my aunts alone. Many aunts, how do we keep track of all of them? Um, yeah, and Kimberly, it, yes, it, all of these things apply to any any genre, um, which is one of the reasons why I, I wanted to bring a very D&D-like character sheet into our practice, because even if you're not writing fantasy, opening up that way of thinking can get you to your work in new, in new ways. Um, and sometimes it, it involves making sure that we're 
we're not locking ourselves into one particular way of thinking. So I would imagine that most people would really recoil at the idea of bringing spreadsheets into a poetry practice. Like are, are two things possibly more opposed at first instance, first glimpse than poetry and spreadsheets. Like not many people are going in that direction, but can it be a way of thinking more um, deeply about continuing themes that you're working on um, or ways in which you're uh, um, approaching similar material um, or similar personas in the case of someone like Dorsey Craft and so on. Oh, and Donna says, um, my novel in progress takes place in one day. So a character sheet can help me make sure that they are still fleshed out characters. Yes. Um, I think we also can think of this very much as iceberg theory, right? We're, we're only seeing this much, but if we have the rest of this body of character knowledge, we're going to get a much fuller version in that tiny little bit that we do see. If the writer is aware of all of these things, even if they're not overtly on the page, they're gonna impact decisions. They're going to impact even things like body language, um, patterns of speech, all of that, all of that loveliness. Um, so I wanna make sure that we get um, the uh, big spreadsheet that I, I have um, made to share with you. Again, it's low tech, but um, here is a link to a Google Doc where you can access that. Um, you can make a copy in Google Docs for your own use. You can save it and work with it off offline. But um, if you just click the link, it will take you there. Um, and definitely let, let me know if anything is wonky or not working with that. And just to do a quick, quick share. Um, so um, what I have done uh, with this is um, there are actually four separate sheets on here that you can do whatever you want with. You can split them, you can modify them, whatever makes you happy. Um, group A and group B are identical. So that's sort of in the vein of my, my hockey team situation. Um, and I have just filled in characters um, and basic character traits, um, which of course you can change your subheadings and think about whatever else um, is appropriate for your, your particular uh, universe. My exceptionally basic, not at all pretty D&D &D style one does have um, a place for alignment. If anybody wants to think about like, okay, who's true chaotic neutral? Who's, who's true, like lawful good in your story. Um, if that helps you to think about how and why folks might make decisions, I encourage you to think about that. Um, descriptions, strengths, weaknesses. And then here I've got my little, on a scale of one to 10, who is trusting, who is selfish, who has ambition, um, et cetera. And then just an all purpose notesy column and then of course in your custom tag, just a little blank, you can you can do whatever you want with this. And so I thought it might be nice um, for me to stop talking um, and let you do, let you play in the sandbox for a little while. Um, so you can, uh, again, save your own copy and modify it in any way you like. Um, and maybe we'll come back in about eight minutes, let's see, like maybe 4.51, and then we'll do a little chat and see if we have questions before our hour runs out, okay?
Okay, maybe um, find a good resting place um, or make any last quick notes you want to make um, for today's session. All right. If if anybody is feeling like sharing um, any thoughts um, from from that very brief um, little taste of using these resources. And I see Deanna's question. I will get there in one moment. Oh, um, yeah. And Tracy's right there on on that question. Um, name notes, um, how they got the name. I always have way too many thoughts about character names. It's one of my favorite parts of the process. Um, and so whether characters are named after someone, whether they love their name, whether they hate their name, um, or uh, whether they're haunted by the name their parents wish they would have given them. True story, my mom uh, wanted to name both me and my brother McKinsey. Um, so I'm, we're just sort of constantly have that in the back of our minds. Like, yeah, we're, my mother wishes we all had different names. It's fine. Um, you know, what does it, what does it do? Does it um, infuse the character in any way? Or is it just like a fun thing for the writer to know? Either way. Um, uh, and also maybe thinking about um, if the name is a, product of multiple families, a hyphenated name, um, a maiden name and a married name, um, a name of choice, whether there's any story there. Uh, I see um, Luke mentions uh, useful for thinking about professions and how that impacts character. Yes, and I'm going to throw um, a, an essay recommendation into the, uh, into the chat. Um, Ben Percy, um, who has this fantastic collection of craft essays called Thrill Me, um, has this beautiful essay called Get a Job that is all about character professions and how that might impact their lens on the world. Uh, so good. Um, Donna mentions, uh, one of my characters is widowed at the start of the story, so this inspired me to flesh out the deceased person even more. Um, where are the absences in their li in characters' lives and how do those absences impact what else is um, happening in those characters' lives, for sure. Other questions um, or observations, and um, certainly uh, any question is fair game if um, there's anything else we can speak to. Uh, I wanna make sure this, this time is useful to you. Yeah, this was really great. I spent time going through my handwritten notes and started listing names of the characters um, for that book. And for the name notes, they were all named uh, by different people uh, in the book. They were named by someone. And... Um, the um, uh, Donna's comment about one of her characters is widowed. Uh, one of my characters in that book uh, was greatly impacted by the former leader who is dead. So that comes out a lot in the book, especially in the beginning. So that makes a lot of sense. And that made me have to go back and flesh out how how she used to lead things. And um, and yeah, that made a lot of sense. Good, awesome. Any last questions or observations before um, we turn things back over to Julian for some announcements? 
minutes. This was really great. I'm I'm definitely going to spend entirely too much time making character sheets for all of my characters now. So no one will see me for a while. Totally fine. But it's the... it's such a great um opportunity to also think about what are the what are the kinds of things that you really want to know about your characters like when you make your own. Um which I really appreciate. I like the scale as well. Like, I mean, it makes sense when you think about this skill sheet and all the skill mm -hmm. levels and different proficiencies people have and having them for my characters and being able to kind of see um, different things like the trust and, you know, selfishness and stuff like that. I hadn't thought about doing that and um, um, I can't stop now. So yeah. thanks for that. <laughs> um, and I, um, I also see uh, a really way to release any writer's block or pause. Yes, if you are, if you're like, I want to write, but I don't feel like I can, you can always do work like this, which is still writing, it still counts. You're informing your practice for the next time. All right. It looks like we we might be in a place where it, we can turn to announcements. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you so much, Holly. And thank you to everyone who participated in today's session. Um, I am about to share some links down in the chat. Um, you can learn more about programs we offer, upcoming classes. You can fill out a brief survey. Uh, we love data about how today's session went. Uh, spoiler alert, it's awesome. Um, and uh, I also shared a link to our next Blue Stoop event, which is in person at the uh, the Head in the Hand books uh, on the 19th for The Bricks, which is a, a trio of readers, really wonderful, talented folks. I hope you can come out. There's free pizza. If that doesn't sway you, I don't, nothing will. Um, so yeah, thank you so much for being here. Thank you to Holly and enjoy the rest of your day. Thanks so much for spending your time with me. Um, I'm super excited about the things you're writing. Um, happy writing.